As if you could ever hide your face from me, Emily. Little Black Sparrow, free from your cage at last. It's done. Brianna Ashworth is no longer a witch. You villain! You don't even know what you've done! A great bloom wilts and fades from the world. Delilah, I will take apart everything you've built until I have what's mine. Oh, Brianna. I don't believe we will speak again. The thought of seeing you reduced to such a pale, sad thing. It's too much to bear. I hate you for this, child. I'm not only going to restore things to the way they were, I'm going to make them better. All right, that was weird. Whatever. I'm back. Welcome back. I see you found the prototype. Your acquaintance didn't make it. It is a risky line of work, I'm afraid, but let's not dwell. I expect you'll be interested in payment. First, your finder's fee, of course, and if you like, I can draw up some schematics based on the prototype, something you can use to modify your tools. And as a token of my appreciation, a discount at the shop. A fair deal. Oh, shit. All right. Well. Welcome back. Please. Five new time. upgrades available. Wow. Deep Howl Dart blinds Stand enemies, Wolf causes wolfhounds to flee. In conservatory where no one can causes see witches to flee. Truly a shame. multiple enemies. When you spy brass, crossbow has perfect aim, even when you chain shots. Okay. The district is so quiet since the... Con this is what I have for upgrading your equipment. Mm. Enables black market shops to sell bolts that stun and blind enemies. Yeah. No need to wrap it for you, I suppose. I mean, causes witches to flee is probably better than the wolf hounds, right? Because the witches seem like they're probably more... Cannot be removed. You won't be able to install it. Yeah, I think the witch one would be better. The witches seem like they would be scarier than the wolf hounds would be, you know? And... That's more you... Great. Alright. It Off we go. Pleasure to serve you. Hmm. Very avant garde. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, ooh, look at all that lore. Wow. All right. After Delilah fell to the assassin Dowd, her magic was lost, and the coven scattered. I made a new life in Karnaka. Then I heard her whispering from the void, leading me to the Duke, who heard those same whispers. Together we worked to bring Delilah right. back to the world, changing the Empire from the home of Aramis Stilton three years ago. Across the Isles, all of us who'd been with her at Brigmore and before, we felt the magic return. Others joined. New faces, new blood. Now, Delilah is immortal. Forever. She holds Dunwall, and we've turned to corrupting the oracular order. The overseers take guidance from their prophetic sisters, and soon we'll influence their dreams and visions. All right, this was productive. Um... Delivery entrance. All right, sure. I don't know why we're going there, but let's go. Anything uh, laying around? Shit. What a nice boy. Oh my, he's my. Just get out of here. Fucking flies. Goddamn. Uh, why is everybody just like dissecting shit around here, dude? There's a lot of junk. Sick. Is this gonna take me to a loading screen or something? Nope. Alright. No, I came through and looted this spot a second ago. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're just leaving now? Yep. Alright. 
All right, Megan, we might want to leave right now. I might have just sprinted back across so the whole done. city to get here. Ashworth won't be a problem anymore. Good. But Emily, there's something else. Back when I lived in Dunwall, I did things that I'm not proud of. Isn't that a requirement for citizenship? What I've got to say is not a joke. I knew Delilah and Ashworth bought into their bullshit, which led me down a bad road. To be honest, before all this, I thought Delilah dead. I don't want to get into it right now. But I felt like you should know. There are things I regret. I mean, you're missing an arm and an eye. Right, no one's surprised. Thank you for opening up. If only a little. I'm starting to feel like you deserve it. Are you ready to leave now? Yes, I am. I think we should have left already. Um, a guard might have seen me right before I turned around this corner. Take me back to the dreadful whale. Another step toward the Duke of Circonos and Delilah. What? 22 detection? No, me never. Certainly not. I don't know what you're talking about. I like how on the chart it gets described as a merciful assault. I like that. I missed two boom bone charms? I thought I got them all. Oh well. Special actions? Sick. Did it all. Great job, team. For several years, Delilah's been here, getting stronger, turning people against me. Why didn't I see it coming? What was I doing during that time? Pretending to listen at court, ruling through an army of bureaucrats, waiting for the next chance to get free of Dunwall Tower. Well, now I'm free. If only I could go back. Aramis Stilton was once an ally of the Duke, the owner of Karnaka's mines. Stilton lived in a fortified bunker at the heart of the Dust District. No one's seen him for years, since around the time Delilah started making her moves. But whether Stilton's alive or dead, his home holds the key to Delilah's immortality. Great. <sighs> Outsider? Mm. No? Alright. Hey, you're up and about, I see. I need to know why Delilah can't be killed. Everything we've learned implies that something strange happened at Aramis Stilton's home three years ago, but then he disappeared. Stilton lived in a bunker kept secure by a fancy lock made by Jindosh. Maybe inside you'll learn more about how to stop Delilah. But I have to get there first, through a ruin created by the Duke, where my father grew up. Megan had an intriguing idea. Paolo is leader of the Howlers. He wants Vice Overseer Byrne killed. And of course, Byrne wants Paolo dead too. Both groups will attack you on sight, but walk in with the corpse of their chief enemy, and they'll treat you like family. You think they'll help me get into Aramis Stilton's home? I'm pretty sure that will work. Seeing this place and these people... I can feel my perspective changing. How will I be different after this? So I, I know a little bit about the mission that we're gonna go do now, because... The lock is basically a puzzle, and you're meant- you can figure out the puzzle, but it's randomly generated every time. And if you're too dumb to solve the puzzle, which I doubtlessly will be, you get to go and find a different way to circumnavigate the lock. Ready now? Are oh, you going with me this time? Nice. Get you as close as I can. So we'll we'll give the puzzle a try, but um, I'm not the smartest man in the world, so I feel like we'll probably end up playing the stage as normal. Who was the man I'm after? Aramis Stilton. An ally to the old duke, loyal and smart. Stilton helped build modern Karnaka with those silver mines. Started as a miner and worked his way up until he was a prince of industry. Good for him. But 
Now, the new Duke drives the mine crews night and day. Dust falls non-stop onto the district. What was once prosperous is now in ruins. I suppose the Duke doesn't care, as long as he sips from silver cups. And what are the cups at Dunwall Tower made from, Empress? In any case, you'll have to pass through the Dust District to reach Stilton's home. Maybe he's still in there, or maybe he's dead. Presumably, he's still alive. We've got to kill someone, haven't we? Gotcha. All right, so I'm assuming that this will just be an openly hostile place. Hold on, is there anything here? Who the fuck? Ugh. All right. Mm hmm. Hmm. This looks like a big place. Ah, wait. Maybe none of that is actually real. But fool me, though. It looks like places we could conceivably go at some point. Oh, fuck. Hmm. Until someone manages to kill either Paulo or Vice Overseer Burr. And I don't see you or me beating a pad to the crone's hand or up to the temporary stronghold. <sighs> oh, there was a door right here. I'm stupid. Anybody up here? I get stuck out of here. I'm tired of cleaning silver dust out of my ears. No, no, no. Grand Palace. That's an assignment. All apples and slippers. Is it not actually coming in? Stay here is probably good enough. Oh. It's okay. One knows. Jesus Christ. So I'm guessing nobody can hear me while this is happening. Oh my god. I, it also comes with the side effect of me not being able to see shit, though. Hmm. How do we circumnavigate that? Right here. Shit. Yep, yeah, he's gonna have to go. Ah, oh, motherfucker. Ah, oh, well. Hey, what's up? Wait. Don't do it. Don't do it. These guys, man. That's the wrong button. All right. No problem. Perfectly stealthy, as always. Nobody suspects a thing. Yeah. No, I don't want to do that. I want to disable you. Um. Ah. This way. Your. Oh. Hmm. 
man. Fine, I'll take the stairs. God damn it. I'm a very observant man. Looked around up here, didn't see shit for the power. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's up here again? Damn. Are you off? Okay. Now. This does look like it would be a terrible place to work. Oh, right. <sighs> Can I see it? No, the thing's closed. God. Well, this doesn't feel safe. No, I don't think I should be doing that. Oh. Yeah, this seems more like it's probably the way, huh? I broke my back in the silver mines. Good for you, buddy. Oh, she scared me, Jesus. Stilton's home is just beyond here. I've been doing reconnaissance. Talking to people. The Overseers and the Howlers have divided up the district. Just ahead is neutral territory where no one will harass you. But further on, the Howlers and the Overseers both have boundaries set up. And beyond those points, they'll attack you on sight. Aramis Stilton is the real That's goal. nice to have an actual neutral Sokolov place again for once. Idea. Yes, I believe that if you take out Paolo or Vice Overseer Byrne, the other one will grant you safe passage and will help you get inside Stilton's home. Neutralize either one of them, and bring him to the other. What else do you know that might help me? Burn is protected by the Overseers. Paolo has the Howlers, but I think he's also got some kind of black magic charm. They say he's got to die twice before the sun sets, or he can't be killed. Good luck with that. Well, we're trying not to kill people. So, you know, I'll have to find the way to circumnavigate that issue, which, you know, we could do by solving the puzzle. Deliver one leader to the other, or find another way. We'll do our best. Um, below. How do I get down to you, do you think? Can you just do it throughout, like this way? That seemed too easy. I'm genuinely, like, astonished that worked. Excellent. How many rooms do we have now? Four? No? Yeah, four. Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um... During shadow walk, your visibility is reduced. When Don't get too close, however. A moving shadow will arouse suspicion. Let's do, let's, uh, do shadow walk, dude. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now we're fucking talking. Now we're like the monster from the evil dead. Yeah, let's go, dude. Wonder how long it lasts for. Let's not walk out in public like this. This is a neutral space, so ha, there's no need to be so fancy. It's over here. Ah, this Jimmy is the door. Says you can beat any lock in the city. I'm not sure why Stilton's house needed to be. What are you covering your face for? Uh, never mind. Jim Gosh Riddle. All right. <clears throat> At the dinner party, Lady Winslow, Dr. Makala, Countess County, Madame Natsio, and Baroness Finch. The women sat in a row. They all wore different colors, and Dr. Makala wore a jaunty blue hat. Countess Coty was at the far left, next to the guest wearing a red jacket. The lady in green sat left of someone in white. I remember the green outfit because the woman spilled her absinthe all over it. The traveler from Dunwall was dressed entirely in purple. When one of the dinner guests bragged about her award medal, 
The woman next to her said they were finer in Dunwall, where she lived, so Madame Natal showed off her prized snuff tin, at which the lady from Beltane scoffed, saying it was no match for her bird pendant. Someone else carried a valuable diamond, and when she saw it, the visitor from Karnaka next to her almost spilled her neighbor's whiskey. Baroness Finch raised her rum and toast. The lady from Fairport, full of wine, jumped up onto the table, falling onto the guest in the center seat, spilling the poor woman's beer. Then, Lady Winslow captivated them all with a story about her wild youth in Dab Dab Dabokava. In the morning, there were four heirlooms under the table. The war medal, ring, bird pendant, and diamond. But who owned... Each. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, so, Madame Natal showed off her snuff tin. Is snuff tin an option? That's a snuff tin, right? Yeah, so that's, um... You. That's... We got, got the gimme. Alright. It's a lot of information to organize. So... What, what, we've got Dr. Morcala in a jaunty blue hat. Countess Conti was on the far left, next to the guest wearing a red jacket. The lady in green... I have to, like, visualize the table in my head. Different guys, jaunty blue hat. Countess Conti was far left, next to red jacket. Lady in green sat left of someone in bright. So she can't be far right. She has to be one of those. The lady in green sat left of someone in white. I remember that green outfit because the woman spilled her absinthe all over it. The traveler from Dunwall was dressed entirely in purple when one of the dragon guns him at war medal. The woman next to her said they were finer in Dunwall where she lived. So the Traveler from Dunwall was dressed entirely in purple, which means it's not Dr. Morcala. Um, Countess Conti can't be them. Because they wouldn't be listed separately. Alright, we're gonna have to do this old, old, style, old school. We're gonna bring up a notepad and we're gonna puzzle it out, right? So... What we got there? Is we gotta collect all the information that we know with certainty. So we got Lady Winslow. All right, so what color were blue? Countess Conti far left next to red, green next to white, drank absinthe. Dunwall purple. So green has to be either center or center right. But she can't be the center one because the center one drank beer, but green drank absinthe. So green has to be center right. No, I've got that wrong. The one in the center drank beer. But the one in... No, yeah, the one in the center drank beer. Because... If green is next to white, yeah, green is sat to the left of white, so that means green cannot be far right because we, the, she's not left of anybody, and we know um, Dr. Molokova is on, or Countess Conti is on the far left. She's next to a guest wearing red. If the lady in green sat next to someone in white, the center one spilt beer. We know the one in the green drank absinthe. So yes, she has to be... So green has to be center right. Green is center right. So... Now, let's so... Okay, so who had the whiskey? So, abs green was absinthe. The center was beer. 
Who was it? The R Baroness Finch had rum. Let's see. There's one else around there. Visitor from Karnaka next to her almost spilled her neighbor's whiskey. Okay, so... That's four... That's four, in, that's four things. So... Center was beer. We know absinthe is to the right of her. Um, so absinthe, center, no, and absinthe center right, beer center. So let's get a diamond. And when she saw it, the visitor from Karnaka next to her. So the person with the diamond has to have been far left or center left because if she's far right she's next to the person drinking the absinthe hmm wait no jesus christ baroness finch was drinking rum the lady from fairpoint drank wine Someone else carried a valuable diamond. When she saw the visitor from Karnaka next to her, almost spilled her neighbor's whiskey. Oh, so she, so the person next to the one with the diamond, spilled the whiskey from the person next to them. So it was a two. So the diamond was two seats over spilt. So. They have to have been in a position where it could jump two places to spill the whiskey. So she can't be far right, because then she would have spilt the beer. So she has to have been... For it to have been able to jump two places, the one with the diamond has to have been center or center right. Because they're the only ones that could jump two places and not be someone, and not be the beer or absinthe. So diamond is center or center right. Baroness Finch raised her rum in toast. The lady from Fairpoint full of wine jumped up onto the table, falling onto the guests in the center seat. So if the person who jumped up on the table almost fell on the center seat, she must have been next to the center seat, right? Because otherwise, what, she jumped up on the table and then made it halfway across the table before falling on the person. It has to have been trying to jump on the table and then stumbled backwards. So, Fairport full of wine must be center left because we know center right is absent. So, center left has to be um, the lady from Fairport. Wine, lady... Fair court center left. So that means that the one with whiskey has to have been the far left. And so that means that the far right one is the person that had the rum, which is Baroness Finch. Baroness S. Finch, far right. Okay. So, now, now, what's the next step? Winslow captivated them all with a story of throughout her youth. So we know, with not with much certainty yet, who everybody actually is, I guess. Um, we've narrowed down, um, Baroness Finch has to have been the far right. So the person with the war medal is next to the visitor from Dunwall. The Dunwall, the person... In from Dunwall was dressed entirely in purple. Countess Conti was on the far left, next to the person wearing the red. So Dunwall is not center left. Dunwall is also not center, and they aren't center right, which means Dunwall is far left or far right. So purple has to be, no, Countess Conti is listed separately of the Traveler from Dunwall that is dressed entirely in purple. So the dress, the Dunwall visitor has to have been on the far right. Because we know absinthe, we know white, green, and red are occupying the center three. 
And if Countess Con T is listed separately to Dunwall, Dunwall Visitor has to be far right. So, no, but that's Baroness Finch. Shit. No, I guess Baroness Finch could be the traveler from Dunwall. I guess there's no reason she can't be, right? So, unless we can find something else that doesn't line with it. Um, so, Dunwall, this is Dunwall. War Metal is next, no, War Metal is next to Dunwall. It's my bad. So, if this is Dunwall, this is the War Metal. So I'm losing track of my own information now. Um, the travel in Dunwall is dressed entirely in purple. And the one who was wearing dressed by a War Metal, the woman next to her said they were finer in Dunwall. Where she lived. Yes, so if Dunwall is far right, then that means it's the war metal on the left. Um, the lady with the rum is on the far right, so the far right has to be Baroness Finch. The lady from Fairport, full of wine, jumped on, falling onto the guest in the center, selling a woman's beer. Then Lady Winslow captivated them all with the story about her wild youth in Dabakova. Jesus Christ. Um. Snuffed person. I was tough. Which the lady from Bellatone scoffed. Saying it was no match for her bird pendant. Uh, were they next to each other? It implies it, right? If. She showed off her prized snuff skin and the lady from Bellatone scoffed. Saying it was no match for her bird pendant. But it doesn't say they're next to each other, so that's kind of a leap. But. So, lady from Karnaka almost spilled her neighbor's whiskey. Baroness for doing that. The lady from Fairport, full of wine, turned upon the table. Wait, no. Have I organized this wrong in my head? She sat next to the lady in white. Next to the little white. Remember that green outfit because the woman spilled her absinthe all over it. The traveler from Drumwall dressed entirely in purple. So Lady Ing no, Dunwall can't be on the right then, because Absinthe was sat left of someone in white. And if Absinthe is sent to right, that means Dunwall is far left. So you're far left, that means you have the war medal. Okay. Um You have the war medal, you have the diamond, because you had the whiskey. Okay. So... Jesus Christ. Um... Countess Conti is. Okay, so if Countess Conti was at the far left... Okay, so Dunwall has to actually be the center... Because Countess Conti is listed separately for the traveler from Dunwall. So if she can't if Dunwall can't be center left, she can't be center right, and she can't be far right. She has to be center. So if the visitor from Dunwall is actually in the center. Oh god. <laughs> Next to her said they were fine, right? So God damn it, that means the person on the war medal could be in two different places now. God damn it. Um. Alright, alright, I, I gotta start again. Clear head. We got erase it all. Start fresh. More collar word, Blondie Blair. It's Countess Conti. on the far left. 